Welcome to the Sports Bubble, a production of iHeartRadio and Treefort Media. My name is Jensen Karp, and I'm a sports fan. And like my one-year-old when he plays with his mom in our backyard, I'm intensely watching Bubbles. But amongst all the social media updates about Dwight Howard being alone at a DJ party and slightly unimpressive food plans, I think we're missing out on a big story. A-Rod and J-Lo are trying to buy the Mets. Sure, they're part of a large group that includes finance bros and Bradley Beal, Travis Kelsey, and of all people, Mason Plumley. But still, the Mets? Sure, the TV deal is great, but I can't imagine seeing these celebrities even traveling to Flushing, let alone hanging at the games. I doubt Jennifer Lopez knows who Benny Agbenyani is. Also, wouldn't it be prime Mets behavior to sell to A-Rod and J-Lo, then have them break up publicly and have to sit in separate sides of Citibank and never even promote they own the team so the other doesn't succeed? Anyway, LFGM. Here I am, still interviewing athletes and sports industry professionals, finding out how they're doing during this very weird time. Because someone has to. This is the Sports Bubble with Jensen Carter. When people first started looking at sports for normalcy, I called foul. It's weird, and I never would have expected how much people look to televised competition to feel whole. But then I started thinking about my favorite TV show, Inside the NBA on TNT. And I realized, maybe I needed sports more than I ever thought, because I really miss my ritual of watching it. And a major reason for that show's success and relevancy is today's guest, Kenny Smith. Kenny the Jet played 10 years in the NBA, most notably for the Houston Rockets, where he won two championships alongside players like Akeem Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler. The former UNC Tar Heel scored just under 10,000 points in his professional run, and his career three-point percentage still ranks him top 50 in the history of the NBA. And since his tremendous playing days, he's continued to give back to the game, becoming a premier broadcast voice alongside Shaquille O'Neal, Charles Barkley, and Ernie Johnson, where they might not only be the funniest foursome working on TV, they've also helped guide a sports fandom through heavy subjects and social issues well beyond the court. With the NBA bubble ramping up, I talked to Kenny about the Woj email, LeBron's decision to keep his name on his jersey, and Kenny's upcoming virtual basketball camp. And I break the news of Russell Westbrook testing positive to him, which felt like quite a Woj bomb in itself. It's an honor to talk to Kenny the Jet Smith in the Sports Bubble. Call from Kenny the Jet Smith. To accept, press 1. Press Kenny, it's an honor to speak with you. I, I wanted to at least start with the idea that that with an, inside the NBA on TNT, it's it's not just basketball talk. You guys have this incredible personality thing going on, and, and you've become so relevant and raw with talk about what's going on around the world. You're sort of a North Star for a lot of people at times. I know that you've been quarantining uh, pretty steadily, pretty strictly, but I wanted to know what you think. Why are so many people rebelling against this idea of masks and science? Well, I have no idea because, um, you know, honestly, for me, who is, you know, outside in public, particularly, you know, I'm an average citizen. Um, I'm going to have to wear it with maybe an hour a day, you know, if I'm out. And if I'm, let's say, let's say if everyone's right about, hey, you didn't really need to wear masks. Let's say you're right. Mm -hmm. It only inconvenienced for an hour. But if you're wrong, you say you, you, you kill people. <laughs> <laughs> so the, 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 the risk out weighs the reward, you know? So I think that it, it's important to understand that as a citizen is just, you know, your sacrifice. And I think maybe being in sports, people who've been in sports have sacrificed their personal gain for the better of the good of the team. Mm -hmm. And so for us, it's not unusual to do that. For me, being on a championship team, Houston Rockets, you know, number one team in the country in college. Yep. Like, you, you're, you're okay with giving some of your individual things up for the greater of the good. I, I totally understand it. It just it's so mind boggling to me. And I and I ask you about sort of the role of larger issues like politics and sports this week as I mean, a large story is that a reporter we all call Woj and lovingly love his bombs. Uh, he gets suspended for two weeks for sending an F word laced email to a senator as a reply for being critical of social issues. A lot of people and players are standing up for Woj. What, what were your feelings when you read about the situation? Well, I just feel that there is a line of, you know, personal and there's a line of work. And sometimes those lines do blend. However, 
his personal emails. I don't know if he's using ESPN's email to send these things out. I don't know how that bleeds in at times. Mm-hmm. Um, when you publicly make statements on your Instagram or your Twitter, at times that could really reflect on your employer and, and their views. So right. I understand that. But if he's sending a personal email about his personal political views to a personal senator, at times we that is not out there. Yeah, it, it, it seems crazy for me, especially because I applaud so much of finding out personal beliefs of people, especially in the NBA, but I found it so messed up that it was basically, you know, it was sent to his personal. He responded with a personal. I mean, if if employers or, you know, any sports league start looking into people's personal emails as, you know, a reflection of, of their employer, it does seem like a very slippery slope. Yeah. Yeah. I think that when you make it a public viewpoint, then you do have an obligation to your family your friends, and your employer yeah. in that order. Like when you make it public. But if you do not make it public, you don't have an obligation, regardless of what your belief is, if I agree with it or not, you don't have an obligation to to us yeah. at all, or your employer, or your fans, or your friends. Yeah, no matter uh, the If belief. you make it public, you do. Yeah. Which... Yep. Which brings us to the NBA bubble. This past weekend, we saw finally some optimism from players in Orlando, whether it was Chris Paul playing cornhole or the Mavs having a DJ balcony dance party. (laughs) But right before we got on the phone, Russell Westbrook announced that he had tested positive for COVID and now obviously has to quarantine and not play. So what do you think morale is right now in Orlando for these players? I think it's, you know, I would say if I was there, I'm not obviously being in that bubble is a whole unique situation. So you have to say if you're there, if I was there, I, I, again, I'm just, I'm optimistic, but super cautious because we understand that this is the most contagious virus that we've had. And it's the most deadly in our lifetime period. So there's no question that's out of bounds. There's no, you know, thought process that's out of bounds. So everyone is optimistically cautious though. And here you have a guy who's, you know, already down there or, or, or right to be. I, I think he's just getting there um, or what have you. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's a, it's an unbelievable, you know, scenario that the, one of the best players in the league has to be quarantined for minimum of 14 days. I mean, I know I've heard you say in other interviews, and it's kind of how I feel about, you know, a rookie is going to have a different response to leaving his family and and sort of the risks than someone who has a full family and has been in the league for seven, eight years. But now with Westbrook and, and you know, sort of seeing some of the video from from the bubble, uh, and we're all laughing at it because it is, it is funny to see, you know, J.J. Redick shotgun a beer because he's bored. But do you think this overall bubble idea, now not having Westbrook play, and what will this championship mean, was it the right thing to do? I don't, I don't think there's a right or wrong thing. Like, right. I, I, there is no equation that is, is comfortable. Every day we get new information that actually contradicts sometimes what the information was before. But I don't think there's any right way. Like, you know, it, it, as, we opened it, as we opened up, it's like, should we wear a mask or not? Like the information that comes in is so contradictory and so diametrically opposed to the, the one that we heard before at times. There hasn't been a united front. There hasn't been one message that's come from people we trust and say, we're going to follow that as a nation. Uh, so now that's why you have spiking in certain areas and all of those things. And, that, and that, that's, the, that's the most difficult part about being part of this is the uncertainty of the information and where you're getting it from. Yeah. And like, even right before we got on the phone together, I was talking to my wife about Westbrook and, you know, I've heard from Gobert a little bit that he still has lasting effects. We've heard whispers that like, oh, these players could feel or anyone could feel the effects on their lungs for years to come. I mean, I don't even know if that's a true statement. I mean, I hate putting anyone, let alone my favorite athletes in that predicament, but I don't know if that's the truth. I don't know if it goes away. I don't know if it sticks with you. I have no clue. Yeah, it's a new it's a new virus, yeah. so no one knows what the long term ramifications are. And I like even when you told me Westbrook, you're the first one to tell me that. Oh. I, I wasn't aware that he would, you know, had such a positive. Yeah. So, like, I'm I'm learning this information as we're talking, and uh, because there's so many other things between the social unjust, you know, the spiking in in Florida and Texas, 
you know, and then like, I live in Los Angeles. What is it doing here? Uh-huh. And, you know, you, you have young kids and, and then all of a sudden, Russell Westwood catch on with Like, that's last on my list. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite a time. Quite a time. Uh, well, more at home for yeah. you. What, what is the plan for you guys to return to Turner, to basketball, to the, our favorite TV show? What, what is, what, what's the rollout for you guys? Well, you know, we, we start doing home shows this month. Mm-hmm. And then they, they're asking us to possibly, you know, to, to continue that those shows in Atlanta. And then from there, I don't know, you know, right, right after that, I don't know. And, um, it's, um, an interesting time when you really don't know your schedule. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of know it. This is a proposed schedule, but is it actually going to follow through, you know, based on what's happening? I'm not a hundred percent sure. Wow. That's uh, crazy to hear even, uh, when it comes to inside the NBA, I wanted to ask also about, you know, my favorite with Ernie, like, you know, he has faced, you know, Hodgkin's lymphoma in the past, and he is of a higher age group than the rest. I mean, is there concern over him jumping into anything quickly? Has it been talked about, you know, sort of keeping him at bay? I think we've all seen that this is not just age anymore. I think initially those were the, you know, the first reports, but I know 11 year old kids in Los Angeles who have it, you know? Yeah. So it's not an age thing anymore. I think we're all concerned, you know, obviously, you know, for Ernie, of course, but we're all concerned for all of our families and friends and what they, you know, they have to go through. Um, you know, I, I've unfortunately had probably a more direct loss probably than, than maybe some of the other guys because I'm from New York. Mm-hmm. And that was where it initially came, you know, the epicenter of where it's kind of like first people were getting tested more and people were dying more. So for me, my thought process about this virus is a lot different, I think, than maybe even everyone else that live and work in Atlanta. You've talked about on on kind of a more surface level, you've talked about how you expect a lot of young teams to sneak in a possible championship here in Orlando. I wanted to know why you saw an advantage for those teams over, like, say, a Lakers or a Clippers who, under different circumstances in a normal NBA playoff, would be clear far and away favorites. Well, I think just because of the fact that, you know, young players train differently. They train to be ready right now. As you become a seasoned vet, you train to become better as the season goes on. And this feels more like an AAU tournament than it does the continuation of the season. And I think the young guys, some of these guys are only two or three years removed from they're saying, oh, this is an unusual environment, but an AAU tournament like this. Being there, all in one hotel, all the teams there. This is what they grew up doing, most of these guys. So I think the comfort level might be different. And then the lack of home court advantage. Home court advantage is big for veteran teams. And because there's no home court advantage, I think that allows younger teams to play better in this environment. Yeah, I I, I totally see that and i guess my thing too is like guys like lebron which we'll get into in a little bit like they're dealing with much heavier things right now i kind of think if you're uh you know a rookie in the league and you're just like man i don't know i play basketball i I, and call of duty when i get back to the uh to the hotel it does feel like they have less on their mind to jump into this bubble yes 100 percent. and um you know when you have less responsibilities you're worrying about you The, the anxiety that other players are having from you know Typically, you're worrying about, do I have to guard Chris Paul? But um, now you're worrying about, what I eat? Can I talk to this yeah. person? Can I play cards in this room? Can I read this book because someone touched it? Then you, if you have more responsibility, how are my kids doing at home? How's my wife, my family, my mom, my dad? So the younger you are, the less responsibilities you have. So the less anxiety you may have, possibly, in this environment. I know I have more, I have more anxiety than my 23-year-old son right now. For sure. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, I have a one-year-old, so I, I tend to think that I have way more neuroses, at least I hope. Uh, back to basketball. You became a bit of a Twitter ratio last week when you placed LeBron as 10th best in the NBA. You've talked about it enough. We're not going to go too deep into it. Citing sort of the change in gameplay over the years, a bit of an equalizer. Uh, I, I, I wanted to ask you, on the other side of things, as a 
common just watcher of, of the game and, and super fan, I see dudes like Zion or Jonas or Dame and they're, they're, they're kind of these like health specimens. Like, I can't believe they look like that. And then I see my dad's favorite players and I'm like, these dudes are sticks. You know what I mean? Like, I'm always just shocked at how physical beyond belief the game has become. Uh, it, with the competition being so much tougher than, say, when Wilt scored 100, wouldn't it be almost that LeBron has it harder? Or what am I missing in, 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 in the expertise of it? Well, I, I would say that the athleticism is more on display. I don't think that it was it's that much more, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. So Michael Jordan was jumping from the free throw box, right? So Zach Levine says, oh, I saw that. So now I'm going to try to jump on the feet and put it between my legs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not. It's just more on display because of the rules as well, because there's no hand checking and there's no flagrant foul rules. There's no, you know, there's no suspension of games. So now you have freedom of movement, which puts your athleticism more on display. It looks very similar if you went to a... Um, a, uh, a rocker game or a pickup game in the, in, in the 90s, you would see this type of athleticism on display. So I'm just, we're talking about threads of greatness now, you know, between Kevin Durant and, 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 and LeBron and Oscar Robinson and Kareem. But I, you know, I've seen Kareem when he was Kareem, the guy, you know, <laughs> yeah. that is hated. And it doesn't look much different. And if you, um, I think that, you know, these guys appear to be, you know, Zion-like. However, on massive of, of, around, it's really not, you know, if you were in a Houston Rocket locker room, you saw, you know, the athleticism of Vernon Maxwell, Akeem Olajuwon, and, and those guys like that, you go, well, it doesn't look that much different, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, Sam Cashel looks like Darren Collison, you know? And so, yeah. <laughs> like, they're not really that much different. Um so some of the guys who used to play football now play basketball. Yeah. That may be it. But in terms of overall athleticism, it's not that much different. I think it's just more consistent mm -hmm. that these guys jump. At it. But I don't think it's higher. I think they just do it more consistently. Well, uh, speaking of LeBron, you know, he's been in the news all week uh, regarding the idea of the league approved protest sayings for the back of the jerseys. He has decided not to go with it. Anthony Davis has followed suit. Uh, some players I think we'll be hearing about in the next couple of days will also agree that it doesn't resonate with their own missions, much like LeBron said. I, I think we live not only in COVID times, but with obviously uh, people starting to wake up to the racial divide, thanks uh, to so many things, but to the unfortunate murder of George Floyd. W what was your reaction? Because I feel like I've changed my thoughts on it. At first, I was like, well, that sounds like a cool thing to do, put them on the back of the jerseys. And then as I listened to LeBron, I thought, well, I don't want anything to be uniform right now. I think everyone should make their own personal choices. And I guess I'm just very confused. What are your thoughts on the jersey situation? Well, I think that... I do like the idea that guys have that opportunity to do it. I would have liked to, for them to admit certain things individually if they didn't see one of their uh, quotes that they wanted on the 22 list. And I don't know if that's happened. I have to be, you know, be careful. That I'm not 100% sure. But I, I think that, you know, this awareness, there are guys, you know, like LeBron, he doesn't have to always wear something on the back of his jersey to get his political message ahead. But there are guys on his team that they do. They don't have the same reach socially and politically that he does. So this helps them get their message across. So I think it's both, and it's understandable. And no one, no one is forced, or I don't think anyone's obligation ever is to, to jump in a, a cause. But you should be aware of it, and you should be able to say that. Let me say, you don't. I don't think your obligation is to start a cause. I think your obligation is to know what your cause is, and because we all don't have the same mental um, imagination to create programs. And so, you know what, man, I'd love to help kids, but I don't even know what to do. I hear guys say that all the time. All right, well, here's a program that you should do. You should research that. You do have an obligation to research it and figure out where do you want to land. 
Your job isn't to create the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. That's not your obligation. But right. you could seek it out and figure out, maybe I'll support that. <laughs> you know, that is an obligation. Yeah, and you obviously played with, with Jordan uh, and, and were friends with him, and, and he obviously had a different approach towards politics and social justice that you know has kind of come under uh, scrutiny, and he's changed. It seems like he's making a bit of a 180 there. Ha- have you been impressed as a fan watching LeBron become this sort of North Star for politics and social justice? I, I just don't think we were in the same place that we're at. Mm-hmm. I don't think we're in the same place to compare what Michael or... Muhammad Ali or even LeBron is doing because they're all different. Like Muhammad Ali is the ultimate of what we're talking about. So I, I think that then to say, well, LeBron doesn't do what Muhammad Ali did. You know, I, I think it's just, it's a different timing. And LeBron is great at using his social media platform where if he tweets something right now, millions of people will know instantly where the news cycle is so different in the 90s. <laughs> By the time it got back to the whole news cycle, it's not news anymore. It's not even news. It's like past. So it's a different environment. You know, uh, there are people, you know, even when Rodney King happened, it took weeks for people to even see the video. Like, weeks. Yeah. You know, people say, oh, I hadn't seen that yet. You know, like, what? Yeah, you seen the Rodney King? Because you have to wait for the 11 o'clock news to kind of show it again. So all day, you don't have an opportunity to see it. Well, now, that information is passed instantly around the world. That's why George Floyd, around the world, there was protest. It wasn't protest just in America. So, right. you know, they were all protesting injustice. So it's just a different moment that everyone lives in. Because imagine if Muhammad Ali who was able to move the needle without any kind of social media. Imagine if he lived in this era, oh, the changes yeah. he could have made. He talked like a Twitter account. Yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, my God. It's crazy. Um, I did want to ask what you expect to see. I mean, uh, with, with these, hopefully, man, I don't know, even with breaking news just before we talked, but, you know, with these games starting pretty soon, like, do you expect to see showing of protest do you is that what we're going to just is going to become the norm for each game i think that the norm is no norm <laughs> there's no norm. <laughs> right norm is out of the window you know because most of the norm that was there before a lot of us really didn't like we kind of were able to move in it and be successful in the, in that norm but didn't mean we liked it so that, I, I i just i think when I hear norm or an old norm, a new norm, I just feel that there is no norm. It is a collection of thought-provoking incidents that are now have to be solution-based. More with Kenny Smith after this. Right now, Feeding America is working tirelessly to ensure our most vulnerable populations, like students who are out of school, the elderly, individuals whose jobs are impacted, and low-income families continue to have access to food and other needed resources during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Feeding America Food Bank Network is committed to serving communities and people facing hunger in America, and their greatest need is donations and support of local food banks. This podcast is committed to donating a portion of the proceeds from the show to Feeding America, and we hope that you can join us in this effort too. Find out how you can help at feedingamerica.org backslash COVID-19. Now, the rest of my conversation with Inside the NBA on TNT's Kenny Smith. You've said recently that it's somewhat inevitable that one day you'll join a front office for an NBA team. And I, I always am so depressed by the numbers of African-Americans working behind the scenes in the NBA. And I, I want to know, obviously, you'd be a great addition to any team. I want to know what other black basketball minds that are out there that you think have not gotten the chance they so deserve. Someone with a basketball mind, someone that would just be such an addition to a team to wear a suit and help out that just hasn't gotten that chance. Well, here's the scenario that I look at it instead of looking at a particular individual or individual. Sports, for some reason, is the only profession where they take your tenure, your experience, and your expertise. And when you finish playing it, they say, it doesn't count. You have to start in the middle. If I, was, if I worked for Amazon 20 years and I took that Amazon team 
to from a team that was starting and not doing well to all of a sudden we're a championship team for multiple years. Then I leave Amazon. I'm the most sought after consultant in the field. But when you leave the sport, they, they go, well, no, you, you got to cut film. You know, starting to film. Them. Like what? Like, because the information that I've acquired over the 20 years of being a player, 20 years at TNT, between runners, um, agents, general managers, and players, and owners that have called me for information and or guidance. Yeah. I'm on an infantry level thought process, like meaning I see things from that point of view, but I also see it from a bird's eye point of view, which they can only see it at. So I know how this decision is going to affect not only the player, but the agent, the runner, and the mom and the dad. The decision you're making about this person going into the bubble. I know how it affects every element of the person that is going in the bubble. That is an experience that no one else can say. Yeah. yeah. If you do your homework and say, I'm going to be, I'm really going to be a student of analytics. I'm going to be a student of, you know, business. I can learn that. No one could ever learn those 20 years and those 10 years in the NBA. Those 30 years, of experience. no one could ever learn that. And so that is where, to me, it seems it's inevitable. And there's a long list of people that have it. I just feel I'm, you know, not true to my horn, but I'm just at the top of that list when it comes to the experience from television. I could tell you how, what your team is thinking <laughs> and what they say, how it affects the biggest companies in the media, like Turner and ESPN, how it affects them, yeah. what you're about to say. Where do you get that from? I don't know. I'm all for <laughs> it. Uh, I, I question, and then we're going to get into the Jet Academy, which I which I love. But uh, do you ever think about politics? Ever cross your mind? Joining? Um, I mean, your, your mom always says, you know, you're going to be the first black president. That's about it. <laughs> when you're little, you're like, you could be the first black president. You know, right. but I never thought of it as a political uh, aspiration. I just think that, you know, um, no, no, I never thought about it. Never thought about it. All right. I'm just placing it into your head. All right. All right. Let's talk about the Jet Academy. You've been holding basketball camps for 25 years, and now with the changes all around us, you've had to call an audible. Tell us what the classes in 2020 are going to look like. Well, what it is, is uh, it's the first virtual basketball training mechanism and sports training, because we're going to venture out as well. That's why we're the Academy. It's basically myself. I host every week with Trey Young, Vic Oladipo, Kemba Walker, all NBA All-Stars, uh, WNBA MVP, Brianna Stewart, uh, Brittany Griner, WNBA All-Star, will be Hall of Famer. And what we do is we're your personal trainer for an hour and a half. And what differentiates it is it's live. It does live on demand afterwards, but it's live. And you get to consume information the way we consume it now. You can ask questions live. You can upload your video and say 48 hours. We kind of answer it and say, hey, you're doing this right. It's the way our kids consume information. They don't pop in a VCR tape. They don't even like going to a demand link all the time. If it's not live, they don't really all the time like consuming the information that's there because they want to interact with it. And that's what we've done. We have some great partners. Big Shack had the Big Shack code. You put in Big Shack, you get a great discount. American Express giving us $35 off if a card holder comes on. We've got some great partnerships come in as well. And it's the first of its kind. It works on any device, anywhere. All you need is Wi-Fi service and or cellular service. That's it. And you can be in a park. You can be in a gym. You can be in your backyard. You can be in your living room or in your room and annoy your mom and bounce the ball in your room. So you can do anything of that nature and be part of this. And we're your personal trainers for an hour and a half today. Yeah, it's so impressive how you guys kind of changed it around. I know you were, uh, I read that you were inspired by D Nice and the Versus series by Timbaland and Swizz Beats. I mean, I, I've, I've been so blown away by all of the creativity on social media. And this is just another sort of great example of it, considering how much of the internet is just garbage people usually. Yeah, I think, again, it's consuming information that you're, the way you're consuming it now and producing it, but at the same time, making it appropriate for the actual movement of your daily life and people can check it out at jetacademycamp.com uh I, it's awesome and, and they can add the big shack code correct to to save money yes they can do that or use your amex and you'll save money as well 
jetacademycamp.com. Again, jetacademycamp.com is where you go. Sign up. Put the big shot code in or use your Amex and uh, come join in. Love it. Well, I wanted to ask you one last thing. You know, like you said, the call of a team's front office may eventually pull you from the Turner broadcast, no matter how much I hope that doesn't happen, but deep inside, hope it does. I wanted to go through some names of people who might send in their resume if you were to leave an empty chair on the show. I wanted you to tell me if you think they'd fare well on Inside the NBA as a replacement. Okay. All right. First, I have I have moving him from courtside to the studio. He's a controversial voice, Reggie Miller. Now, Reggie's, Reggie's great where he is. Reggie's great game day. I love I love watching Reggie, listening to Reggie at the game. So Reggie's a game guy. Reggie's okay. a game guy. Very good. Okay. Uh, this guy just retired. He's a, an animal of how, how long he played, but what a basketball mind with Vince Carter. Vince could come on the show with us right now. We, we have a seat, but we could put a fifth chair up there six feet away. He, he, I don't have to leave for Vince to be there. <laughs> okay. That's a good one. All right. This one, yeah, he's become quite an impressive podcaster, and I love his voice. I did not think I would. Even as a Clippers fan, I never saw myself rooting for the uh, media presence of Matt Barnes. Hmm. I would love to see Matt Barnes dominate like NBA TV mm-hmm. because he's got like a, a persona that I'd like to see every day more than I'd like to see once a week. Uh, yeah. I would I, like, he's I, like a radio show. Okay. I get it. I mean, the- he's going to be topical. I'd like to hear him on a topic. A lot of times on our show, we're one week away. And sometimes the topic that is hot on Thursday is not hot on the following Thursday. I love to hear Matt Barnes take on things as they happen. Okay. Very, I, listen, I'm surprised again of how much I love hearing Matt Barnes talk. All right. This one is a little crazier. It's for times that we want to go on an acid trip. What about the addition of Bill Walton? Bill Walton? Yeah. Just, joy, just throwing him he's, in. I think he's great where he is. Okay. I think he's great at ESPN. And, and, right. and, and, and college basketball is where he lives. To me, yes. you know, what he does for college basketball in the Pac-12 is, like, perfect. He's one of my favorites, though. He's one of my favorites. Uh, I laugh every time he's on. Okay, my other one, this is my re- last one, and I think this is the most realistic to me because I think that he brings a great game mind and lets he'll let Shaq and Barkley do their thing. Uh, Kevin Garnett? Oh, we've had Kevin. Kevin was there already. Okay. Well, well interestingly enough, you know, Area 21... Yeah, I still wear those shirts. I create the the word the cuss button for him. Yeah. <laughs> I, I listen. I'm trying. To, I'm trying. To, I, no, I, I saw him in. I saw him in uncut gems. I'm just trying. I'm trying to fancy him up a bit. Put him at the desk. Yeah, I, I miss Kevin, man. He he is the most enthusiastic person about life that I've ever met. Mm-hmm. I've never met anyone that more enthusiastic about life. So I, I miss him. All right, well, maybe we'll agree on him. But luckily, we do not have to replace you. This is all fictitious because I do not want you to leave. I do want you to stay healthy and safe, though. I appreciate you talking to me. And I, I hope next time we talk, I don't break another name with positive COVID tests again. I, I feel bad about that now. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Kenny. <laughs> Take care. You too. Sports Bubble is produced and distributed by Treefort Media. The show is executive produced by Kelly Garner, Lisa Ammerman, Matthew Kugler, and me, Jensen Karp. Tom Monahan is our senior audio engineer and sound supervisor, with production and editing by Jasper Leak. Additional production help from Tim Schauer, June Rosen, and Haley Mandelberg. Our theme music is composed by Spilkus. If you've enjoyed what you've heard, please subscribe, rate us, and review us on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And please visit feedingamerica.org. If you're able to make a donation, any amount makes a difference, and you can learn more about other ways you can help on their website. For more information on the Sports Bubble, links to the socials, and for show transcripts for our hearing impaired listeners, go to treefort.fm. Be safe and be well. The Sports Bubble is a production of iHeartRadio and Treefort Media. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.